Hello, everyone, and welcome to Heads Up, the weekly webcast and podcast of the National Headache Foundation. I'm Dr. Lindsay Weitzel, migraine strategist, founder of the Facebook group Migraine Nation, and chronic daily migraine survivor. I am here today with Dr. Tim Smith. We have a really exciting episode on some new drug data related to a toge pant. And Dr. Smith is the CEO of Study Metrics Research. He is also the Vice President of the National Headache Foundation. Hello, Dr. Smith. How are you today? Very well, thanks. Hello again. Thank you for being with us. So we want to talk about this exciting data that's pretty much brand new. And uh, Dr. Smith is always here when we talk about medications because he's very knowledgeable in this area. So um, this data has been uh, revealed on a TOGE pant. It is an oral G pant, um, which means it is an anti-CGRP medication, excuse me. So Dr. Smith, um, it's taken orally. Can you just talk to us a little bit, even though we've done this before um, on previous episodes, but can you talk to us about what a G-PAN is and how it's different from the monoclonal antibodies that some of us will inject, you know, monthly? Right, so the G-PANs are, uh, as you mentioned, they're CGRP blockers. They work by blocking the CGRP receptor, and we know CGRP is the calcitonin gene-related peptide. It's a mouthful to say. Mm -hmm. The name doesn't matter. It's what it does. It's that pro-inflammatory molecule that lives in people's brains and blood vessels and is responsible for most of the migraine symptoms for most migraine patients. Mm-hmm. And uh, the small, the G pants are what doctors call small molecular weight molecules, as opposed to the antibodies, those inject monthly injections or quarterly injections that you mentioned. Those are larger uh, antibody molecules that have to be given um, uh, through an injection form, and the the small molecular weight uh, products get absorbed through the intestinal tract and can circulate through the system and go to its target spot. Um, in, in that fashion. So you can give them, administer them as a, as a tablet uh, formulation. Okay. Um, so the results about a toge pant that were just revealed were from something called a phase three clinical trial, um, meaning it's not on the market yet. It's still going through testing. And can you tell us what the phase three clinical trial is? Sure. So for uh, in drug development, uh, which by the way, drug development uh, takes an average of about anywhere from eight to 10 years to take a drug from concept to the marketplace. Mm-hmm. And not a lot of people really are familiar with that uh, little bit of information, but it's part of our daily lives where we do clinical trials. Yeah. Um, basically, the medication may be a designer molecule that started out specifically trying to target a, a, a receptor or a molecule, and that's the case for CGRP blockers. And uh, they're sort of designed on computer in that way, and then they go to test tube studies, and then to animal studies, and then they go into human studies. Mm-hmm. Human studies are four stages um, or phases, uh, and uh, phase one is the initial proof of concept studies. Phase two is the, is the more broader dose ranging and other defining studies, and then phase three are the uh, clinical trials, the registration clinical trials. These are, this is where the data, it's the largest studies and, and the data from these studies is used to submit to the FDA to get approval for the drug and then for, phase four would be post-market. So the phase threes are very rigidly controlled, usually, and in the case of migraine, they're placebo controlled, they're large studies, they're usually for longer duration, and uh, they are designed very stringently to make sure that uh, these compounds are being uh, evaluated in the most uh, reliable way um, and that statistics can be applied uh, so that we ha- can have confidence in the results. Okay. You used um, some vocabulary that I want to make sure we define um, in case there's some people out there who aren't aware of what a placebo-controlled trial is. So the placebo is the, we call it dummy pill. Uh, it's the, it doesn't have any active ingredients in it, but it looks just like the, the, the active ingredient uh, uh, tablet, for example, mm-hmm. if it's a tablet study. And so when, when um, the patient enrolls in the study, typically what we do is we make sure they meet the entry criteria for the study. Uh, then we uh, give them an electronic, a little handheld uh, electronic diary. <clears throat> kind of, it's a, basically, it's a, 
kind of an Android phone with the guts switched out to be, uh, you know, just to do the diary uh, mm -hmm. entries. And so the patients log in and then they document their results in, in preventive studies. They log in every day and tell whether it's a headache day or not and whether mm -hmm. it meets migraine criteria and if they took any medicine, all the details on that. It's pretty intensive. And so they do that for, a, for four weeks as a run in and that gives us their baseline. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then they come in for what we call the randomization visit. And that's when the computer flips a coin and, the, and assigns them to a group, either one mm -hmm. of the active treatment arms or to a placebo arm. And this is done in a blinded fashion. So I, as the investigator, don't know what they receive and they don't know exactly what they receive. And, uh, and that takes, uh, takes out bias. It keeps, people, it keeps an element of mystery in there. And so people don't uh, overinterpret uh, signs or what happens. Right. And the FDA insists on that. If you don't have placebo controls, then, then yep. they uh, don't rely on the, any uh, results that you get from, from your registration trials. Okay, so thank you for defining that for us. Uh, it basically uses a dummy pill and it's blinded. And that's usually what a phase three trial that's going to go to the FDA looks like. So I just wanted to ask uh, a question about um, the type of drug that a Togepant is. So we have two other medications that are G-Pants that are on the market. We have Nurtec and we have Ubrelvi, and they are used for the acute treatment of migraine. The thing that's different about a Togepant is it's being tested for the prevention of migraine. Does that mean that these subjects were taking the medication every day? That's exactly what it means. Okay. Uh, so the uh, Togepant molecule is constructed uh, to be uh, more favorable and useful for daily use as a preventive. And that's the way these studies are, are designed. And if it gets FDA approved, that's the way it'll be marketed as something to be taken every day. Whereas uh, Ubrelvi and Nurtec, the other two already marketed G-Pants, mm -hmm. are uh, only for occasional intermittent use for, uh, to abort or relieve uh, an acute migraine attack once it has started. Okay. Um, how effective has a Togepant been in this phase three trial so far? Yes. So in the, in the phase three uh, trial, they studied, um, the, uh, they studied the medication in three doses uh, versus placebo. And uh, all three doses worked, uh, and they were all three superior to placebo in their effect. The range of improvement on that was a decrease in monthly migraine headache days by uh, anywhere from 3.7 days per month of the lowest dose up to 4.2 uh, days per month in the highest dose. And that came compared to placebo, which was in that two to two and a half uh, days per month range. Mm -hmm. And this was statistically superior. Uh, the other way we look at this, the key secondary endpoint is looking at uh, what percentage of patients achieve a 50% reduction in their migraine headache days. So they cut their headaches in half. Mm -hmm. And that number was ranged from 56 to 61% of, of uh, patients in the, in the trial. And uh, that compared to 29% uh, uh, for placebo. You can so, see how big my smile gets because anytime you can cut somebody's migraine days in half, that is just an awesome thing. So what side effects were found related to a Togepan? So the, the side effects, uh, there were three that um, uh, occurred with any significance and separated from placebo, and that was uh, constipation occurred in 6.4 uh, to 7.7%. Uh, percent. I'm reading this so I can get the numbers right. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> and that compared to 0.5% in the placebo arm. So some mm. difference there. Uh, and constipation has been reported with, uh, with uh, at least one other uh, CGRP blocker as well, so that was not a shocking uh, uh, revelation there. Nausea occurred 4.4% up to 6.1%, and that compared to 1.8% on placebo. And then uh, upper respiratory infection occurs, and it's kind of like a background noise thing, but it's 3.9 uh, to 5.7% compared to 4.5% placebo. So that was almost uh, the same as placebo, just a higher dose um, tended to drift a little way, uh, a little away from the placebo. But those were the three that that separated from uh, from placebo um, in the in the clinical trials. And there were no uh, serious adverse events on the two higher doses uh, during the study. So that's okay. that's reassuring. 
And the other thing they looked at just incidentally, and they would have to do a specific surveillance for liver enzymes because we're always concerned about right. when you give a medication by mouth and it, it has to be detoxified by the liver. Mm -hmm. We're always worried about that. And there were no uh, liver injury signals uh, in, in the clinical trials that didn't even show up. So that's good news for us. All right. So this question, uh, I don't know if we can answer it, but I think it's important, you know, to ask it because people are going to be wondering. There are so many migraine medicines coming out now, and obviously we're so grateful. It's such an awesome time, but I'm just wondering, are there any particular types of patients that should be targeted with a toge pan or ones that should feel like this is a medicine they should take. For example, if they respond well to the other G pants, are they likely to respond well to a toge pan? Or if they get localized reactions to injecting the monoclonals, then should they jump to taking something like a toge pan? Are there, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, so we don't have any, as I usually say, we don't have any data-driven answers on that mm -hmm. uh, yet. It's a common sense thing, though. If, uh, if uh, someone, you know, uh, has, an inject, has injection site reactions or doesn't tolerate needles or doesn't, is not, uh, doesn't have the manual dexterity or the wherewithal to give an injection, obviously taking a, a swallow tablet makes a lot of sense for them. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, you know, we, I think most people would, would rather take a pill than to take an injection, although taking one injection a month is not a big burden for, for people. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as preventives go, I, I think, you know, when you, when we look at um, how this would be positioned in the marketplace, uh, we don't really have um, any biomarkers or any um, descriptions of what doctors call phenotypes as you're presenting symptoms or demographics or anything that would predict that the, you would be more likely to respond to one than the other. So it's still a kind of a trial and error thing. Um, my guess is they'll probably, this will be, a lot of it will be dictated by the insurance industry mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, if you haven't tried, you know, Topamax and uh, propranolol and, right. and triptyline and other things like that first, the, the, the insurances probably won't pay for this as a preventive. It'd be mm -hmm. similar to what we see with the, with the CGRP monoclonal injections. Um, but, you know, it's uh, uh, the, the high degree of safety that we have. We don't have any cardi cardiovascular contraindications or any issues like that. Um, the side effect profile is, is you know, very tolerable, uh, well tolerated. So um, I think uh, patients who don't tolerate the entry level uh, products and uh, or don't get benefit from them will be the primary uh, target uh, population for this drug. Okay, um, and my last question for you is, do we have any indication of when a tojapant might be available on the market for us? Well, um, this we'd have to use a, our kind of best, best guess technology here. Uh, the, 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 the efficacy data is already in. So this study plus the previous studies are enough They've got everything they need for the FDA. They, the, the safety extension parts of the studies are still ongoing, should be done later this year. And then when the statisticians finish uh, doing the analysis on, on that part of it and get the additional safety data over a longer period of time, then it'll be submitted to the FDA. Mm -hmm. It usually take about a year to approve after submission. So we're pr they might sneak it in before the end of 2021. Uh, but it could be early 2022 by the time it gets on the market. Okay. Well, I'm so glad we were able to cover all that uh, and the new interesting information on Atojapan. Is there anything else you would like to add to this discussion? Well, you know, uh, I guess I would just say that CGRP has been all the rage for the last uh, two or three years, and mm -hmm. it continues to, you know, give us new uh, products entry into the market. Uh, one interesting, um, uh, I guess, bit of trivia I would uh, maybe throw out there just for our viewership is that for the, there are currently four um, monoclonal antibodies on the marketplace for prevention. There are two G pants on the market for abortive therapy. Um, this, uh, so at Tojapanth, and there's one other um, preventive uh, G pant that are in the studies and a nasal spray and some more things behind that. 
but thus far, for all the studies we've done um, for the marketed doses or potentially marketed doses of the, all of these CGRP active medications, they've all met the primary and sec key secondary endpoints for every trial that's been done. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, this is encouraging news. I think this just underscores what a win-win uh, CGRP blockade uh, turns out to be for for migraine sufferers, and that's a very reassuring um, and encouraging, um, you know, bit of information for us that, that these products work, and and uh, we can have a lot of confidence that uh, uh, they're going to be around for a while and and continue to bring a lot of relief to uh, patients who who really struggle. Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much for. Uh giving us your expertise today and being with us. And thank you everyone for joining us this week on Heads Up. And please join us again next week for the weekly webcast and podcast of the National Headache Foundation.